Hello and welcome to a new section of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop I'm going to call Tube Time. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Okay, so I decided I'd revisit the one tube regenerative radio and this is what I've done. No, I'm not going to talk like that. I'm not going to talk like I used to in my old videos. I thought I would go back and revisit the one tube regenerative radio and try to actually build a case for it and build a power supply for it. Well, unfortunately, this particular circuit I'm going to scrap because no matter what I do, it doesn't seem to want to work anymore. And I'm too much of a lazy sod to actually go find out what's wrong there and try to fix it. It's on right now and all I'm getting... Maybe you can hear that? Is a buzz. That's it. Absolutely nothing else. Which is really disappointing because I came up with a pretty good way of tuning this thing. This is the coil right here. And... Got the ferrite rod on this little mechanism here that can be moved in and out and that's the coarse tuning that would have worked pretty well if this thing still works i've got the variable capacitor down here for the fine tuning but nothing absolutely nothing Turn out the regeneration control, doesn't matter. All I'm hearing is a buzz. That may sound a bit weird to some of you living outside of England who live in 60 hertz regions. Well, here the AC sounds like... Sounds like that. So I'll just turn that off. So I'm scrapping the circuit, actually. I'm just going to turn it off and let it cool down. I ain't touching that for a while. I don't actually know how hot those particular ones get, but not going to take any chances. I mean, not going to take any chances. I forget, I'm British, I'm supposed to say or instead of ah. Although I wish I was American because I hate England. Yes, I said it. And I've got a really squeaky floorboard here. So I'm just scrapping this circuit. I didn't even get to the point where I was going to cut this out to the right size. You know, I was going to put a knob on the other end of this thing and, you know, put all the controls through the thing and make a nice looking radio, but that's not going to be, well, it's not going to use this circuit. Instead, I'm going to build another regenerative radio. My own design this time, using one of these. This is an RCA 6C6 from about 1943. It's pentode. Barely ever been used. So it's got plenty of life in it. And here is the circuit. And I wish I could get the camera closer because I've got it right pressed up against the thing right now and this is as close as I can get it. And there's no zoom on my camera so I'll have to zoom it in post editing. Pretty simple circuit. Here's the valve, going to power it on 45 volts, that should be plenty enough voltage. If not, I'll just make a higher voltage power supply, so that's not really going to be much of a problem. Got our tuning coil and tuning capacitor here, aerial, um, isolation capacitor, ground. And for the feedback, what, we're going, what I'm going to do, so feed the output signal into this capacitor here, and into this variable resistor here, which goes into this coil and that's how the regenerative feedback is going to work and of course got to be careful not to turn it up too much or it will start to transmit out of the aerial and interfere with every other radio that's trying to tune into the same frequency so got to be careful with that and these two components here are optional i'm just going to add those in if the grid voltage is too low like at zero volts or something like that i mean if it's at negative one volts or more it's going to be perfectly fine but so I'm going to go build this circuit out, 
And yes, I already have some of the parts. We've got the valve here, we've got tuning coil here, which I wound onto the end of a fluorescent tube. I've actually got some paper on the end of there. Stuck the paper on the end of the fluorescent tube, but of course when I wound the winding when I wound the wire on there, now I cannot get that off without breaking something and uh yeah. I'm basically just going to use this as my test coil, if that works, then I'll wind another coil. And there's the tuning capacitor. No idea how many picofarads this is, but I think that's going to work pretty good. Well, here it is, all built up and stuff, but it's not working. And no matter what I do, no matter what I try to tune into, no matter what I do, nothing. Absolutely nothing. <clears throat> no matter what I tune this into, no matter what I turn the regeneration control up to. Nothing whatsoever. I blame this coil. I had serious doubts that that was going to work anyway. It's not like this isn't doing anything. Far from it, actually. I don't even need to touch anything if I even just put my hand near it. I can hear a hum come out of the speakers. I don't know if you could hear that, probably couldn't. So no problem there. If I touch the anode, I mean, if I touch the first grid, which is what this bit here is connected to, I know on most of these, that's where the plate's connected, but on these, these particular ones, that's where the first grid is connected. Actually, if I touch this bit first, which goes into the amplifier... Oh, you can see what I was touching. This is the output capacitor. Maybe you'd hear something very slightly, but if I touch this... problem there, we've got plenty of amplification. Trying this with a different coil, I mean a different coil, and it's doing something. Or at least it was earlier, now let's try to tune this thing into something. At the moment all I'm getting is a buzz, as you can probably hear. But it's definitely doing something. I'm using this coil here, from that other project that I scrapped. The sort of tap that's sort of quarter of the way across the coil, I'm using that as the ground. So anyway, that might be a little bit hard to follow, so I've drawn up a schematic of what's actually going on, so it might be a bit easier to follow. So, this is what I've done. Using the coil out of that other radio project that I scrapped, which is tapped about a quarter of the way across, and yes, this coil is wrapped around a ferrite bar, which is what I've drawn in there. And for the feedback part of the circuit, instead of using a variable resistor, I'm using a variable capacitor. And that seems to work quite well. I'm actually quite surprised that it'll work with a tapped coil. I thought we might get some phasing issues or, or something like that, but it seems to work absolutely fine. It's just not picking up any radio frequencies. Right about there, we've got a lot of static. Okay, well, I've made another coil now. And this one has a separate tuning section and a separate feedback section. So ignore this coil here, that's now not doing anything at all, that's not even connected to the circuit. Got the feedback connected like it was before, to the valve's output through this tuning capacitor. And, what can I say, but it works! Or at least it was working a minute ago. I was picking up something, I think the tuning might have drifted. It's still picking up a ton of interference. There we are, we've got something. I think I'm just going to um, use one gang of this tuning capacitor because tuning's very touchy.
could just do something about all that interference that it's receiving, you know, all that buzzing in that it's receiving. It's I was picking up some incomprehensible babble. Let's adjust the regeneration. It's just about the four oscillation there. Is that Indian or Spanish? Or? Actually, what language is that? I see the French or Indian, I don't know which, they all sound the same to me. Yeah, don't get much on the other from here on though. Only right at the end of the dial. I'm sure once I put this in a nice sealed box though, sealed off from all the outside interference, that will sound a lot better. It won't have all that humming in the background. Yeah, I think that's about all we're going to be able to get for now. Well, it's looking more like something now. I've made a box for it. Um, well, an enclosure for it. And yes, I've used cardboard because I'm a lazy bum and cardboard is easy to work with. But anyway, we've got the one tube or valve sticking out the front like that. Of course, I'm going to glue everything down properly after I test this. Let's just get that wire out of the way. And this is the inside of it. There's our tuning capacitor, there's our feedback capacitor, and of course the coil itself. Okay, so this rather odd looking contraption that you can see is the almost finished AM regenerative, regenerative radio. I've put this metal shielding around the tube to try to cut out some of the interference, you know, cut out some of the harm it's receiving. And hopefully that will cut out most of it. And let's just take a little look inside. I've cut... It still looks a bit messy, but I've tidied up the wiring as best as I can. And I've also wired both gains of this feedback capacitor in parallel to give it a bit more capacitance so we get more regeneration and now let's give it a listen to see or rather hear how good it sounds right so let's give this thing a listen I'm gonna turn the power on because I've got it connected to my power supply I'm gonna power this on about 30 volts okay filament should be warming up and in a minute we should get something if it's even tuning. Okay, all we're getting is buzz. But there's a radio station coming in. Well, it's definitely picking up things. We're getting some buzz. It's picking up something really strong about there. 
Let's try to adjust the regeneration. Well, I think I'm gonna call that a success. Hang on, I'm gonna have to turn the thing off so you can hear me over it. Now turn the amplifier down. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call that a bit of a success, actually. I don't know what it's actually picking up. I don't know what the frequency it's on or anything like that. I don't, so I don't know what station it is. Yeah, if I could just figure out what's causing that buzz, that hum, Although it might be the fluorescent lights. Let me just adjust the lighting here. Hmm, that was part of the reason. I've now got the low lights turned on. So you can still see what I'm doing. You can see the valve glowing a bit now. Okay, I'm going to increase the voltage to 40 volts. Of course, I am going to put this together properly. The beginning of the show, as well as at the end, uh, it's no good giving the lady and the gentleman on the telephone messages to pass to me because they won't get passed. Okay. We went into oscillation there. The only thing that's a little bit of a problem is that adjusting the regeneration does retune it a bit, but that can always happen. No, no, don't go into origin, don't go into oscillation. Okay. Well, no good talking lady, I don't understand French. <laughs> Starts. That sounds like modern music to me, so I'm not going to play that. Oh, yuck, there it is again. Anyway, before I go, like I said, I promised I'd show a schematic of the thing. So here it is, for all to see. This is the schematic of the radio that you just heard in the previous clip. Got the two coils here. We've got the main tuning coil. There's the feedback coil wound around a ferrite bar. The only thing I don't know is the values of the two tuning capacitors. Well, variable capacitors. So that's why I've marked them as question mark because I have absolutely no idea what those are. And some of you might be wondering what these LEDs are for. Well, that's to limit the voltage that comes out of the radio. So, so in case we get a nasty high voltage spike when we turn the radio on or off, those LEDs will catch that. And because there's very little current, it's not going to blow them. So it will limit the voltage to about 2 to 3 volts, whatever the LEDs work on. So not enough to blow the amplifier that I had this connected to. And that's basically it. So, I'll see you next time. And like I always say, until next time, goodbye.